Okay, man, I'm going to try to make this video quick. This is actually like my third video. Uh, this machine is pretty complicated, so, but we can talk more over the phone, but I want to just give you a rundown on how everything works, okay? So let's start around the back. You're going to get your machine, and you're going to obviously, we're going to plug in our cord that comes out of here. We're going to plug it into the wall. I recommend putting it into a power surge. Um, this will be Velcroed up here. This is your volume. You've got a spot on here for um, headphones. You can turn your volume off. And of course, you can turn it up and down here. Um, this blue button up here is your power. So this will actually turn your um, computer on. So that will lead us to here. Our computer will be up and running. We will open up our control panel, pull out our uh, remote control, aim it towards the middle, and turn on our TV. Um, now, once um, we've done that, our game is up and running. So kind of stay right there real quick. Um, that's going to lead us to... How in the world are you going to get this through your door? You're not going to. Um, sideways, without the control panel, it's like 29 inches and will fit through any doorway. But you're going to need to remove the control panel. So you're going to remove these two lag bolts, and this bad boy pops off, and then you're good to go. But you might ask, we got all these cords here. What do I do? Normally, we mount these in here, but being the fact that the control panel has to be removed, there's no way around it. So we've labeled everything for you. Your steering wheel is taped down. This right here is the light for your uh, trackball, and it's it's labeled. So a trackball blue. You got a blue cord and a red cord. Um, this is uh, says for your steering wheel. You can follow the cord. It goes right to your spinner and steering wheel, and it just unplugs like a USB. Um, this says for your trackball. It goes right to your trackball. Just unplug it and plug it back in. This uh, keyboard encoder is called an iPack. You're gonna unplug it and plug it back in. Uh, and the only thing that's not labeled, but it's a little obvious, it goes to your lights. Um, you just unplug it here and plug it back in. Okay, so we do have that bound up on the inside about that deep inside your cabinet So when it falls through uh, you don't have to worry about keeping uh, you know control of everything But everything with tape on it. You're gonna put here again except for this cord. We've also got your internet card um, That you're gonna plug underneath the control panel, which I will show you in a minute So that kind of leads us to everything in the control panel unscrew your bolts uh, screw your bolts back in um, and plug everything up and everything should come on. Okay. All right. Now this is pretty tight right here. So we kind of push this down here and that kind of keeps it really snug. So you don't have to worry about your control panel opening. Now, if you look under here, we have a 14 port USB port. Um, so this is where you can hook up Xbox controllers, your light guns, stuff like that. That's for your wireless keyboard and mouse. Simply, uh, unplug that. What's cool is this will fit in the hole. Okay, so that's how you're gonna have. That's how you're gonna remove that when you get your game. And there's a huge, sturdy uh, piece of Velcro here that will make sure that stays in place. Now, you're uh, obviously wondered where you're gonna put your light guns. You're just gonna. This has a little play. You're gonna push that here, and you're gonna stick. You're gonna stick in your USB port there and run it to the back side of your cabinet. Um, I did not show you, but where that USB, where that volume knob is. There's just four screws that hold in your door. So that just pop that sucker off. It's a little difficult to get back on. Uh, it's made to be really tight. Okay, so now we know how to remove our control panel, all the components that are on the inside, how to turn our TV on. Let's talk about our game. Uh, real quick, you have uh, a control panel. The control panel is kind of self-explanatory because we put stickers across everything. These spin. Okay, so... We have everything corresponds with the position of the buttons. You have player one, player one coin, player three, player three coin, player two, player two coin, player four, and player four coin. You have the control buttons in the center. You have escape. It says exit. It's escape. You have a start that does not start a game. As confusing as it is, we don't have an enter button, but this acts as enter. Okay, there are several games that require enter. Uh, some of the computer games, some uh, when you're doing a control inside the arcade settings, you'll use that. Uh, these, these wrenches is for tab. This will only be used for uh, the arcade games, and this is pause. Okay? Now, this joystick is the same as this joystick. This is just an eight-way joystick for your fighting games, and this is a four-way joystick for games like Pac-Man. These three buttons are the same as these three buttons, except for these also double up as mouse buttons, okay? Um, so they, they double up as mouse buttons. Now, how do we navigate our system? Um, 
Here's how we navigate our system. We're going to navigate our system with our player one joystick. Player one joystick will spin through the entire wheel. These are all gaming um, different wheels with different games inside. It's a little complicated. It's going to take you a little while to acclimate yourself. The five terabytes out of control, and they just updated it, so there's so much stuff on here, it's unreal. No, I do not make the drives. There is a separate guy. I just include them in the price, but uh, you pay me to build the game, customize it, install everything. But if you have any tech issues as far as controls or settings or whatever, you will get a hold of the guy that made the drive. Get with me later, and I'll inform you of who that is. Okay, to navigate through the wheel. You're going to see a banner like this. Everybody gets confused. You cannot play it. When you press player one start, you're going to see this. Okay? It's because it's just a banner. It's designed to let you know that anything under the banner is all arcade. Okay? That will start with this blue tab called MAME. MAME um, is where all the arcade games are at. So there's actually like 15,000 games inside this one wheel. Now, all the rest of the wheels are set up for convenience. You have uh, main four player, the clones, the adult games, the kid games, homebrews, a bunch of hacks, Konami. This is just the makers of Street Fighter and the Turtles, um, Midway, Mortal Kombat, Namco, the Pac-Man. But all these arcade games are actually inside this one wheel. So if you want to keep it simple, just you just use main. So you press simply press player one start. Pressing player one start will get you into the wheel like you can see. When you want to get out of that wheel and go to a different wheel, you press the player one coin button and you notice that it backs out. Okay? So let's go back into MAME. Once I'm inside MAME, man, there's like 15,000 games in here. It's kind of crazy. Hold your joystick to the right or to the left and a letter will pop up. Go to the letter and our player one start button will be our main control. Okay? So I press player one start to go to Z. Now I'm in the Zs. Okay? Uh, player one, button five, acts as favorites. Again, player one start is my main control. Now I'm in the favorites. We've kind of already listed some of the most popular games. So once you've put all your favorites in there and you play the same games over and over like most people do, uh, no need to flip through the whole wheel. Just go into main, go into your favorites. When you want to back out of that wheel, once again, I press player one, uh, player one coin. I press player one coin and I'm back out. Okay, so that's pretty much how we get into a game. Press the player one start, I'm in the wheel. Now I'm out of the wheel. I'm back in the wheel. When you wanna play a game or start a game, you just press player one start. It's a computer, so don't button mash. Just give it a second, be patient. Your game will start up. At the end of the day, little disclaimer, it is a computer. Our best friend is going to be our keyboard and our control alt delete. If anything freezes or whatever, you just control alt delete. You see this, you can use your trackball. Again, this acts as a mouse, but there's also a mouse inside. <coughs> Go into my task manager and I can just close down hyperspin and restart it. Okay? So, once you're inside a game, pretty self explanatory. Hit some coins, press the start button. Uh, pick your guy. Normally you pick a guy with these controls. You get started. That's how it works. Um, I don't want to get into this. I'll make a separate video, but to just kind of touch on it, when you need to do an adjustment inside a game, you press the tab button. Once you're inside here, um, to navigate through this with your joystick, and you're going to need to press enter. That's why we have start here. So input general is all of the main controls. So you got up, down, left, right, start, coin, button, one, two, three, four, five. And this goes, if I go down to the bottom, you can see the trackball, the mouse, the light guns, all the light guns, all this will be set right here. Okay, so you will, pretty simple. When I want to change something, press enter, aka start, and those little arrows will pop up. Now the next button I touch becomes that button. So player one up, you can see KVD up. That sounds for keyboard up. So now I've changed that control. So if you want to change something around, that's how you'll do it. This is also how you will change your light guns. You will go to the X and Y axis. That really, that's just the trackball. Now, he's already kind of got this set in here for you. Uh, gun 1, gun 2, gun 3, gun 4. It should work out the gate, but it might not. Okay, so when you want to do that, when you want to get out of this, you're going to go to pre previous menu, hit start. So that's kind of what this is. So just remember, input general is all of main. Input this machine 
is just that gain. So if you need to do a setting for this game, like for instance, the block is button one, and I hate that. So I always move the block out of the way. This is where you would go do that. So you'd go down here and see it says run. Uh, it says up, you know, low kick, high kick. You can change those to whatever you want to. So when I press enter, that will open up. The next button I touch will become low punch. So that's what's cool. You can change different games around. Now, when you want to get out of this, you can either go back to the main menu here, or, uh, or you can just hit tab, and now you're out. Okay, when I want to exit, I hit escape, and I now I'm exited out of my game. I'm back into my, I'm still in the same wheel. Again, always to back out of a wheel, always the coin button. All right, so we know how to get in the, uh, a game. We know how to uh, press player one start. We know how to get out of the wheel. Press the coin button. We know how to start a game. Press player one start. So if you stick with the games and some of the consoles for a little bit, you'll be super happy. If you try to tackle everything at one time, you'll get very frustrated because MAME is using all one emulator. When you're going into playing um, Super Nintendo and Sega and all that other stuff, they're all different emulators, and they don't all work the same. you got to just kind of figure out what the buttons are. Like, for instance, Sega, I think, is this button, this button, and that button. Why? I don't know. You can change that, but it's far more complicated to change that than it is for the main arcade. So you'll have to get with the tech guy to handle that. Okay, so without getting any more detail on how to get into a game, we know how to do that. How to get out of a game, we know how to do that. This is a very large, crazy system. Uh, these are collection wheels underneath here. They're just all the collections of the game. So Mega Man, uh, it's all the Mega Man spread out over every gaming system. Just kind of for convenience. Main other thing is going to be our pinballs. You're going to run, run across a few things that don't work. You'll have to get a hold of the tech guy to help you out with that. Um, some of the stuff is computer stuff and will require you to have Xbox controllers. Um, where are my pinballs? Pinballs are right above the collection wheels. He's done so many upgrades to this thing, there's a lot more games than normal. So, goodness gracious. Okay, so when you come across something like this, you're going to see a banner. That just means everything under the banner are pinballs. You have Pinball FX3, Pinball FX2, Pinball Arcade, Visual Pinball, and Future Pinball. Future Pinball and Visual Pinball are more your old school stuff. Uh, pinball Arcade has got a mixture of both. My favorite are Pinball FX2 and Pinball FX3. When you're inside Pinball FX2, pretty simple. Press start, pick your game, give it a second, let it load. Our joystick will be our plunger. You'll hold it back. It'll shoot the ball out. Player 1, button 1, and player 1, button 2. I mean, uh, player 1, button 1, and player 2, button 3 will be your flippers. So, hold my joystick back, let it go. And uh, these are my flippers. So you can see the graphics on these things are absolutely amazing. My nudges are going to be player one, button two, and player button, player one, uh, player two, button two. When you want to get out of the pinball, you hit exit. Some of them are a little quirky, and they exit a little bit different. Uh, pinball FX3, this is the last thing I want to talk about as far as how to get into a game. It's a little bit more complicated. It's a brand new emulation. You can't pick a game here. It doesn't matter which one you pick. Just pick one. It's not going to go to that game like the other pinballs do. Um, and this one will not exit with escape. You have to just manually exit all the way out. But it's amazing. The graphics are ridiculous. Um, it just came out months ago. I don't even know how Chris put this on there. So, how to get into Pinball FX3. I'm going to go here, hit enter. Use my, again, like my keyboard and mouse. Um, I, I just always say no thanks to anything. We're not connected on this. Um, single player. Pick what game you want to play. Single player. You can play classic or single. doesn't really matter. I'm going to start a new game. Man, these graphics are ridiculous. Look at the water. 
I mean, man, it is just so crazy. This is Jaws. It'll go around the whole table, or you can press the joystick and skip right down. Again, hold it down. Boom, shoots my ball. My flippers. You can see the nudge. So it's nudging. Okay. Now, when you want to exit, you cannot exit the normal way. You got to use your trackball. See my, my mouse here. I just go up to pause and exit out. Exit to single player. Go up to uh, the arrow in the top corner. Hit that. Hit the arrow again. Hit the arrow again. And hit the power and exit game. That's how you exit Pinball FX3. Okay, other than that, back out of that wheel you'll mess with all this other stuff a little bit later there's lots of stuff in here so we know how to turn our game on we know how to remove our control panel we know how to plug everything up we know how to get into a game we know how to get out of a game we know how to do uh, settings for MAME we know how to coin our games how do I shut my system off just like I'm gonna back out of the wheel with the coin button it will ask me do I want to exit the system player one start yes I do now I'm in Windows 10 when I want to get back into hyperspin, you just double click on this and it will boot me right back into hyperspin. Okay, when I want to get out again, press my coin button and I'm exiting just like you're backing out of a wheel. That's how you back out of the game. Um, when you want to shut down, just shut down like you would shut down a normal computer. Hit power and restart. Once you actually restart your game or turn your game on, it will actually boot right into hyperspin. Okay, so I'll make another video later on what, where your stuff's at, the folders and all that good stuff. I've also got several other videos, but I wanted to do, give you a main rundown, man, on how to turn your game on, how to remove the control panel, and how to use your controls and how to use your pinball. Um, other than that, when it comes to light guns, you're on your own. I don't mess with the light guns, but there's a million YouTube videos on how to set that up. So, I uh, hope you enjoy your game. We really appreciate the business. I think your game came out fantastic. It's the first design like this that I've done. For everybody else, we make several other designs just like this one. All of the other tutorials um, will actually be identical. All the controls are set the same way in every game that we do, whether it's this game, whether it's uh, one of our uh, pedestal cabinets, or it's one of these pedestal cabinets, or this. Or our two-player version over here, as you can see. Sorry about the mess. It's a war zone. But I just want to kind of show off some of these beauties. Um, so, Centerpiece Arcades, we really appreciate um, the viewers, the support. Uh, thanks a lot. And as always, happy gaming.